Most people associate prediabetes and type 2 diabetes with weight gain and unhealthy habits. So by logic, losing weight is the most surefire way to make sure that you don't develop prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, right? Well, the answer to that question is a bit more complicated than you might think, which is why in this video, we will explain the relationship between weight loss and type 2 diabetes, some seductive but untrue myths that the weight loss industry has been peddling for many years, and the best way to lose weight, prevent type 2 diabetes, and improve your overall quality of life at the same time. Now, we know that weight loss can be an uphill battle for most people. We also know that sometimes it's hard to even talk about weight loss without it feeling personal. Now, the weight loss industry in, in the modern world is a bit of a minefield, and it has a recipe for a lot of confusion and a lot of discouragement. There's a lot of fad diets that also lead to quick results, and then yo-yo dieting as a result of it. And even worse, you see these drastic changes, but then it leads to these binge and starve eating cycles that actually worsen the problems that they claim to fix. So with so much confusion in the world of weight loss, we understand that it can be very challenging to even try to begin to understand this topic and even harder to take action. However, we also know that the relationship between weight and diabetes is actually very important to understand. So let's start looking at the cold, hard facts. There are a couple things that we absolutely know to be true. According to the scientific literature, only 10% of people living with type 2 diabetes have a normal BMI, and the other 90% are overweight. We also know that there's a stepwise relationship with BMI and the chances of being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Basically, the higher your BMI, the higher your chance of being diagnosed. And it's not just being severely overweight that can affect your chances of developing type 2 diabetes. Research shows that, quote, having even moderately elevated BMI is associated with increased risk of developing diabetes mellitus complications, end quote. So we know that increased weight leads to an increased risk of diabetes, but why does this happen? The relationship between weight and diabetes is complicated, but the main aspect we'll focus on is the accumulation of fat tissue in your body and how it contributes to a condition known as insulin resistance. Now, what is insulin resistance? Well, insulin resistance is caused by the storage of excess fat in tissues that are not designed to store large quantities of fat. Now, we've spoken in detail about this process in previous videos, so click above and you can learn a lot more. Now, when you develop insulin resistance, it causes a metabolic traffic jam of sorts that dramatically reduces the ability of insulin to communicate with cells in your muscle and liver, reducing your insulin action, therefore causing glucose to get trapped inside of your blood for long periods of time. And when you have consistently elevated levels of blood glucose due to insulin resistance, this is by definition prediabetes that can then progress to type 2 diabetes. So how does weight gain result in more insulin resistance and lead to type 2 diabetes? Well, the exact same fat that gets stored in your liver and muscle that can contribute to insulin resistance can also accumulate inside of your adipose tissue and therefore cause you to gain excess weight. Think about it like this. More fat in your belly and fat cells also means more fat in other cells like your liver and muscle. Like we mentioned before, the relationship between weight, diet, and type 2 diabetes can actually be quite complicated, but this aspect of, is, of science is very clear. More weight gain leads directly to an increased risk of type 2 diabetes by inducing insulin resistance in both your liver and your muscle at the same time. So we have to ask ourselves, is every form of weight loss a good idea? So based on what we just learned, it would make sense that you should lose weight in any way possible, right? Well, not exactly. While it's true that losing weight will usually decrease your risk of type 2 diabetes, there are some forms of weight loss that are unhealthy, unsustainable, and in some cases might even increase your risk of type 2 diabetes. And in some cases, they're even advertised specifically to reverse diabetes. Isn't that crazy? Advertise something 
as a cure for diabetes when in fact it makes diabetes worse? Well, it's true. The biggest culprit here are diets like the paleo diet, the Atkins diet, and especially the most popular diet ever invented by humans, the ketogenic diet. Each of these are advertised as miracle cures for diabetes, but the truth is that they actually worsen insulin resistance and increase your risk for prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. So right now you're probably thinking, man, everything is a lie. I'll just eat whatever I want and I won't have to worry about the consequences. But that's fear and uncertainty talking. It's not science, which is exactly why we're going to bring it back to the thing that we care the most about, science. Now, science points to one clear strategy. If you're looking to lose weight and lower your risk for type 2 diabetes and improve your overall health, there is really only one way to get there. And that is to eat a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet. We've said it a thousand times before and we'll continue to say it over and over again. A low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet that contains fiber-rich plant foods is the only way to ensure that you can lower your risk for diabetes, improve your overall health, and lose weight permanently. Over the course of thousands of studies with hundreds of thousands of participants, the results have become clear. The most effective way to lose weight, reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes, and improve your overall health is to eat a diet rich in natural plant-based carbohydrates. Here at Mastering Diabetes, we call these foods green light foods because they should make up the majority of your diet and also because you can eat as many of them as you want. But wait, if you've been learning about your diabetes health, you may have heard one word in there that might strike some fear, and that is carbohydrates. Now, wait, 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 wait. I thought carbohydrates were bad for me. If you've been living with diabetes or you've been reading about it for a while, you may have heard that carbohydrates, or carbs as they're commonly called, are always bad. But this simply just isn't true. Now, some carbohydrates could and should be avoided, but others are actually the key to a long and healthy life with reduced chronic disease risk. The carbohydrates that you should avoid are what a lot of people think of when they say the word carbs. Now, these include foods like pastas, refined sugars, white bread, syrups, chips, crackers, and so on. These are refined carbohydrates that are otherwise called simple carbohydrates, and yes, they are just as bad as everyone says that they are. But there's also another type of carbohydrate which is very important to pay attention to. This type of carbohydrate will actually change your life in a good way. And these are called whole carbohydrates, also known as complex carbohydrates. Whole carbohydrates are found mainly in foods like fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, peas, and whole grains like brown rice, buckwheat, millet, and barley. The difference here is what comes along for the ride with the carbohydrate energy and how your small and large intestine processes them. Refined carbohydrates contain large amounts of glucose and or fructose and are not protected by vitamins, minerals, fiber, water, and antioxidants and phytochemicals. And as a result of being unprotected, that causes your blood glucose to do strange things. Meanwhile, whole carbohydrates come prepackaged with valuable health-promoting chronic disease-fighting micronutrients, including vitamins, minerals, fiber, water, antioxidants, and phytochemicals. Now, these micronutrients, they slow the rate at which glucose is absorbed into your blood, and that leads to a more favorable rise and a more favorable fall in blood glucose following a meal. These micronutrients are very important too. These vital behind-the-scenes players play an incredibly important role in supporting tissues all over your body, including your brain, eyes, and heart, organ function, and that's only scratching the surface. Think of micronutrients as the key ingredients that cells require to perform thousands of chemical reactions at every moment of every day, allowing them to work around the clock to optimize tissue function and slow the rate of aging. That's why vegetables, fruits, and whole grains are so good for you. So what's the takeaway here? Fearing carbohydrates is not the answer to your weight loss woes. Differentiating between refined and whole carbohydrates is the difference maker. Reduce your intake of refined carbohydrate foods from refined breads, cereals, pastas, cookies, 
and crackers and increase your intake of whole carbohydrate rich foods like fruits, starchy vegetables, legumes, and intact whole grains. When you do this, not only will your blood glucose improve, your ability to lose weight will improve dramatically. And the data supports this to an incredible degree. Now it's one thing to just say that this approach works well, but a relatively recent 16 week randomized clinical trial in overweight adults shows exactly what can happen when you start eating a low fat plant-based whole food diet. Now subjects in this study were asked to follow a low fat plant-based whole food diet containing approximately 75% of energy from carbohydrates that came from vegetables, grains, legumes, and fruits. The researchers found that by eating a low fat plant-based whole food diet, that reduced basal insulin secretion by 54%. And it also improved the ability of beta cells to respond to glucose when it appeared in the blood. Now, both of those are very good things. In addition, subjects lost abdominal fat and significantly reduced their BMI, which in turn increased their fasting insulin sensitivity. So what does this tell us? Well. It tells us that a whole food plant-based diet, even without portion control, that's the key, no calorie restriction, can lead to impressive weight loss and improve sensitivity in a very short period of time. So what happens when you add exercise? Well, we know that this weight loss strategy works by itself, but to really take it to the next level, you can add other strategies like intermittent fasting in addition to daily movement. And when you combine a low-fat, plant-based whole food diet with intermittent fasting and daily movement, you've got the Mastering Diabetes Method. And the Mastering Diabetes Method is extremely effective at promoting weight loss, both in the short term and in the long term. Collectively, our community has lost tens of thousands of pounds and has simultaneously experienced dramatic improvements in both diabetes and cardiovascular disease biomarkers in addition to increased energy and significantly improved digestion. In fact, our research study demonstrated that our program promoted an average of 20 pounds of weight loss. But let's not just talk about weight loss. The results on diabetes health were powerful too. With people in our program logging an average A1C reduction of 2.0%. And that fits with the data. These aren't crazy new gimmicks. These are easy to understand guidelines that we've known for centuries that are good for you. Well, the truth is that diabetes and weight loss have an incredibly intimate relationship. The chances of developing diabetes increases as your body weight and BMI increases, as does the chance of chronic complications. But the good news is that you have the power to achieve your ideal body weight. It doesn't come from fad diets, but instead from tried and true results and tried and true science. And that includes a low-fat plant-based whole food diet along with intermittent fasting and daily movement. That has been tested in hundreds of thousands of people over the course of time and has been proven by science to be the most effective prescription for both weight loss and improved sensitivity at the same time. And this isn't just a theory. Thousands of people around the world have already used our method to find success in losing weight, managing their diabetes health, and dramatically improving their overall health and their quality of life. And trust us when we say that you can too. The science here is sound. We're not coming up with anything all that new and you can do this all on your own. Or if you're looking to take the next step, master the method and live your best possible life, the Mastering Diabetes Coaching Program is there for you. We have a range of programs from group coaching to private coaching. In order to find out which option is best for you, we suggest booking a free discovery call. Simply click the link below and you'll be directed to a page where you can book a time that works for you and speak with a member of the Mastering Diabetes team. And don't forget to push the cute little like button. You can push it with your thumb or your mouse. You gotta subscribe to our channel and you gotta turn on notifications by clicking, again, the cute little bell icon this time. When you do, you'll be notified of more videos to give you the inside scoop on how to master your diabetes health.